The Holy Gospel for today is taken from the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now Jesus came down with them and he stood at a level place. And he was surrounded by a great crowd of his disciples and an even greater multitude of people who had come from Jerusalem and all Judea and even the seaside towns of Tyre and Sidon. They'd come to hear him and to be healed by him. And anyone who was troubled by an unclean spirit, he cured them. And so they pressed closer, all trying to touch him, because power radiated out from him. Then he looked up and he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, because you shall laugh. And blessed are you when people hate you and exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, because surely your reward is great in heaven, because that is precisely what your ancestors did to the prophets. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and be glad, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. Those words of Jesus are not easy to embrace, at least not for me. Rejoice to be hated and excluded and defamed and reviled. That is to be blessed? Well, yes, it can be. And the story of Robert Coles and Ruby Bridges and Tessie Prevost reveal just how that can be true. Robert Coles is a remarkable man. Um, here are just a few of the things about him. He was a Pulitzer Prize winner back in the 1970s. He was awarded the Medal of Freedom in 1999, our nation's highest civilian award. He got a MacArthur Genius Grant. He taught at Harvard Medical School, and he wrote over uh, 60 books and hundreds of articles. And in 1972, Time Magazine called him the most influential living psychiatrist in America. And the thing he's probably most remembered for is this five-volume work called Children of Crisis, a study of courage and fear, and this is what he won the Pulitzer Prize for. And as the title indicates, he studied children who were in crisis and painted a portrait of courage and fear. And in his long career, he met many, many remarkable people, but two of the most remarkable were a couple of six-year-old girls from New Orleans called Ruby and Tessie. He met them almost by accident. It was 1960, and uh, he was serving as a psychiatrist in the Air Force. And he had joined the Air Force because he hoped to go to exotic places like maybe San Francisco and Hawaii and Japan. And he got assigned to Biloxi, Mississippi. So his life was kind of adrift. He was drinking heavily. He was battling bouts of depression. He was morose and withdrawn, and he began to think that he shouldn't be giving psychiatric care, he should be receiving it. So he found a psychiatrist in New Orleans, and every week he'd get in his white Porsche and he'd drive from Biloxi to New Orleans to this upscale neighborhood to the office of his psychiatrist. Well, on one of those trips, he was in New Orleans and he was driving through uh, a disadvantaged, poor neighborhood in um, New Orleans called the Gentilly District and state troopers had blocked off all the major roads 
and there was some sort of disturbance because of something going on racially. And so he stopped and uh, started asking around, and apparently it was at an elementary school, France Elementary, not too far away. And so he walked over to see what all the commotion was about, and that was the first time that he ever saw Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges was this six-year-old girl who was the first black child ever to attend France Elementary School in New Orleans. And as Coles listened around, he discovered that every day she had to run this gauntlet of ang an angry white mob that would scream obscenities, that would call her names, that would threaten her and her family. And she did that every morning and every afternoon. And when she did get to school, she was there all by herself because none of the white parents would let their children go to school with Ruby. She had to be escorted by federal marshals because the local police would not protect her. And so every day she ran that gauntlet with these U.S. marshals on either side of her. She came into school and then left at the end of the day. Well, Coles began to think that she would be an ideal subject for a study on the effects of stress upon children because of what she went through every day. This is the famous Norman Rockwell painting of Ruby Bridges going to school, being protected by federal marshals. And so he approached Ruby's family and asked if he could interview her and begin to, to uh, get to know her. And at first they were reluctant because no white person had ever set foot in their house. But eventually he won them over and he began to talk with her once a week. And whenever they got done talking and didn't have anything more to say, uh, he asked her to, to draw pictures. And as the weeks turned into months, he found that the roles were reversing. That he had come as this psychiatrist who had degrees from Harvard and Columbia and the University of Chicago, to study and help this poor, disadvantaged girl in New Orleans. But he found that he was becoming the student and she was becoming the teacher. And she was teaching him how to lead a more meaningful and a more ethical life. Well, whenever he would meet with Ruby, he'd go home at night and he'd talk to his wife, Jane, and he just couldn't understand how this six-year-old girl could endure this verbal abuse every day with such grace and equanimity. And he imagined what he would do if he were in that situation. And he said to his wife, if it were me, I'd call the police. But Ruby couldn't do that because the local police would not protect her. Then he said, well, I'd call my lawyer, but Ruby and her family didn't know any lawyers and they couldn't afford one even if they did. And then he said, well, I'd rise above the mob by analyze them, I, analyzing them in psychological terms and I'd probably write an angry editorial to the local paper. But Ruby couldn't do that because she was just learning to read and write. And so one day he finally asked her how she managed to put up with the awful, ugly abuse that she was getting each day. And she told him she prayed. She prayed every day. She pay, prayed for herself that she would be strong and brave. And she prayed for the people that she could forgive them for what they were doing. And then she said this, Jesus prayed that on the cross. Forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Well, Ruby was not the only six-year-old black girl to suffer from that kind of an abuse. Um, at a nearby school, the McDonald School, there were three six-year-old girls, Leona Tate, Gail Etienne, 
and um, Tessie Prevost. And they were going through the same thing. And years later, Gail said, we were all spit upon. I had my dress ripped almost completely off of me. I was hit in the stomach with a baseball bat. Well, that's when the federal marshals had to intervene and had to protect these three girls as they went to and from school every day. Well, after um, some months of this, going through this kind of uh, verbal abuse, um, Tessie began to wonder whether she should go to that school or not. But, but her, her grandmother would have none of it. You see, whenever the federal marshals came to uh, the door on uh, any given school day morning, she would greet them with good morning, and she'd say, Lord Almighty, what a gift. And then she would entrust Tessie to their care and she would walk to school with her lunchbox in her hand, surrounded by federal marshals with revolvers on their hips. But Tessie had had enough. She wanted to go to school someplace else, but her, mother, her grandmother said no. And this is what her grandmother told her. She, she said, you see, my child, you have to help the good Lord with his world. He puts us here and he calls us to help him out. You belong at that McDonough school. And there will be a day when everyone knows that, even these poor folks. Lord, I pray for them, those poor, poor folks who are out there shouting their heads off at you. You are one of the Lord's people. He's put his hand on you. He's given a call to you, a call to service in his name. And so Tessie and her two friends kept going to the McDonough School. Years later, Robert Coles wrote that in the academic scale of moral development, the highest level of moral development is to be able to love your enemies. And only a few people ever reach that, people like Jesus and Gandhi and a few precious saints. And he said he never expected to find that level of moral development in four little black girls from a poor neighborhood in New Orleans. And yet, he did. He did because those girls were blessed. They weren't blessed because they had to suffer that abuse. Jesus never blesses violence and hatred and prejudice and abuse. He doesn't bless it, and we cannot either, not for a moment. And yet they were blessed. They were blessed because they discovered at such a young age the power of forgiving your enemies, the power of praying for those who persecute you. They were blessed because they learned just as little girls that more hatred can't drive out hatred, that more sin cannot drive out sin, that more evil cannot drive out evil that more darkness cannot drive out darkness. Tessie's grandmother was right. Those people in that abusive mob were poor, poor people. They were impoverished morally and spiritually because they believed that prejudice and anger and dehumanizing others would lead them to the good life that they wanted. But they were so wrong tragically wrong because darkness cannot drive out darkness but light can and more hatred cannot drive out hatred but love can and more evil cannot drive out evil but goodness can and more sin cannot drive out the pain of sin but forgiveness can. Here's Ruby and Tessie today, grown women, and if I were to meet them, I would tell them, you were blessed. You were blessed to discover as little girls the power of forgiveness and prayer. You were blessed to be set on the path of goodness and grace, set on the path of light and love by the adults who loved you. 
you were blessed to have a community in your life that allowed you to rise above the hatred and the anger and the prejudice. You were blessed to be able to walk that path beginning as a six-year-old and continuing to walk it even today. Tessie and Ruby, you were blessed and you are still blessed today. Amen.